Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Got a question for you. 383 small block Chevy power adder crate motor, centrifugal blower, roots blower. Which one makes more torque? Which one makes more power? The answers might surprise you. In this video, we're going to compare a Torque Storm centrifugal supercharger to a 671 Roots supercharger on a 383 power adder crate motor from the guys at Blueprint Engines. And the interesting thing is the two superchargers provide a dramatically different boost curve, but the power curves were eerily similar. Let's check it out. To illustrate the difference between the Torque Storm centrifugal supercharger and the 671 root supercharger on a small block Chevy, we obviously needed a small block Chevy test motor. So we chose a power adder crate motor, a 383 stroker power adder crate motor from the guys at Blueprint Engines. And because it was a power adder crate motor, we added another power adder to it before we added the Torque Storm supercharger or the 671 blower. So what we did was add a quick shot of nitrous to it because it was already on the dyno and why not nitrous is so easy to add. So this motor was a 383 stroker. It was 9 to 1 compression. It had the blueprint uh, aluminum heads on it. We also augmented it with a camshaft. It was a 536-555 lift, 224-236 degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We installed an Edelbrock air gap intake manifold, the Holly 750 dyno headers, and an MSD distributor, and ran the thing first naturally aspirated, where it produced 446 horsepower and 455 foot pounds. So the first thing that we did was add a quick shot of nitrous to it. This was done with a Zex perimeter plate. We put jetting in it to add 100 horsepower. We made sure to heat the bottle to optimize the flow rate of the bottle. We also filled it before we ran the test. And we also optimized the air fuel by dialing in the fuel supply to the nitrous to the nitrous and fuel jetting. So everything was working out perfect. And this is what happened. We jumped the power output up to 572 horsepower. Torque jumped up quite a bit to 610 foot-pounds. And you can actually have even more torque than this, even with this jetting, simply by activating this earlier in the RPM range. The earlier that you activate the nitrous, the bigger the torque number will be. You'll just get a consistent gain of between 100 and 120 horsepower like we see here throughout the whole RPM range. It's just the earlier you activate it, the more torque you get. That's the great thing about nitrous. But let's see how this nitrous compared to what we came here to test. And that was the Torque Storm Centrifugal supercharger. And here is the, this is getting a little bit busy, but you can kind of see the um, Torque Storm made more peak power, obviously, than the nitrous. We ran the Torque Storm with the same uh, dual plane intake manifold. We replaced the 750 with an 850 blow through carburetor from the guys at CSU. And we ran this thing. I'll go ahead and put the boost levels up here from the Torque Storm. And we'll be able to take a look at that more when we take a look at the 671 as well. But it made 635 horsepower and 596 foot-pounds. So it had slightly less peak torque than the nitrous than the, the nitrous hit did, but it obviously carried power out farther. And we obviously activated the supercharger much lower than we did the, with the nitrous. But as I said, you could activate the nitrous lower as well. So both of these power adders actually add quite a bit of power. Now let's take a look and see what happened on this same combination when we ran a 671 roots blower, and then we can compare the centrifugal to the roots. After running our nitrous and our torque storm centrifugal supercharger on our 383 power adder crate motor, it's time to put the positive displacement 671 supercharger on there with twin 750 Holly carburetors. So the first thing we did was install the blower kit on our awaiting 383. And we put pulleys on it to produce a peak boost of 8.3 pounds. And we were rewarded from, with our 671 with 602 horsepower and 550.6 foot-pounds of torque. And we did what everybody else does with a blower or turbo. We obviously turn the boost up, and we do that by changing the pulley ratio. So if you put a bigger bigger crank pulley on and or a smaller blower pulley, you'll spin the blower faster, and that's exactly what we did. So we raised the boost to 9.7 pounds, and our peak power checked in at 615. Peak torque was up a bit to 564 foot-pounds. And then finally to 11.4 pounds, and our peak was 645 horsepower and 589 foot-pounds of torque. 
And the interesting thing is if we take a look at the, I'll go ahead and get rid of the lower boost levels here so that it doesn't get too complicated. Get rid of our nine and our eight pound. And we'll compare this boot or this power curve offered by the 671 blower on our 383 to the curve offered by the Torque Storm Supercharger. As we can see, the interesting thing is that they're very, very comparable. And despite the fact that one is a roots blower and one is a centrifugal blower, and I'll go ahead and put the peak boost levels up here for both of them, and actually our, our roots blower is making a little bit more power, but the interesting thing is, despite the fact that these blowers were dramatically different in the way that they provide boost and their efficiency and all these things, they made very, very similar power curves. Now, if you, if you look at these things and fine tune them, you'll realize that probably if we were to run this thing at a lower engine speed, the roots blower, the positive displacement roots blower would probably start to, um, add more torque there, whereas the centrifugal would lose torque down there because it would be making even less boost. But the thing that allows the centrifugal to equal the torque output of the 671, despite the fact that it's making slightly less boost there, is the fact that the 671, the roots blower, relies on a very, very short runner open style manifold. And that limits power. Um, the reason for that is we ran a dual plane with the Torque Storm Supercharger, and that adds power compared to the very short runners on the on the blower manifold. So you need to keep that in mind when you're talking about the difference between positive displacement blowers and centrifugal blowers, because the intake manifold can kind of have uh, a fairly effective change in the power curve. But the cool thing is on our 383, both the Torque Storm and the Roots Blower provided nearly identical power curves, which I kind of thought was awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at the boost curves now associated with these changes. But before we do that, we'll make, we made one final run with the 671 that allowed the power output to go up quite a bit. Now we kept the pulley ratios the same, but what we did was run E85. And we did this by going up from, we, we used the same carburetors. We didn't even use E85 carburetors. What we did was just put a ton of jet in it. We basically went from about 76 jets in these twin 70, 750 carburetors up to 99 jets. We just threw all the jet in it to run the E85. And here's what happened. You can see it loved the E85. The peak power was up to 700 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 646 foot-pounds of torque, and obviously the E85 being supplied by the carburetors on top of the blower helps cool the charge, so it has everything good going for it, and I will tell you that every time I've run a positive displacement blower with the E85, excellent things happen. Let's check out those boost curves. Our final comparison is what make this really interesting, and that's the comparison between the centrifugal blower and the roots blower in terms of the boost curve. Because we would think that based on the boost curve that the power curves would be dramatically different, but it turned out that they were not. This is the boost curve offered by the Torque Storm Centrifugal Supercharger on our 383, and it started out at 3600 RPM at 4 pounds and wound up at a peak of 6200 at 9.6 pounds. So it has a rising curve typical of a centrifugal fashion. And here's what happened when we added our 671, first at a peak of 8.3 pounds, started out at 4.2 and ended up at a peak of 8.3. So interestingly enough, a lot of guys think that roots blowers have this flat boost curve, like immediate boost, and they did have immediate boost down low, but it still had a rising curve. And we saw that again when we changed the pulleys make a peak of seven, uh, 9.7 pounds. And at this point, it had more boost than the centrifugal down low. Started out at 5.5, ended up with a peak of 9.7. Here was our final run where we ran a peak of 11.4 pounds. And this is the run where it made the same, basically the same power as the Torque Storm. So it had quite a bit more boost it had nearly seven pounds down low at 3,600 at 11.4 out at 6,200, which is more than the torque storm at every point. But again, like I said, we had, and, and actually, if anything, the 671 also had a little bit more timing. We only ran 27 or 28 degrees of peak timing with the torque storm, whereas we ran 30 degrees on the uh, 671, all of that was with a combination of pump gas and race gas until we added the E85 and then we ran E85 obviously. 
on the 671 blower. But interesting changes in the in the power curves, interesting changes in the boost curves, and <laughs> it's just interesting that a centrifugal blower made basically the same power curve as a roots blower on our 383. Let's get to the conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure comparing the TorqueStorm centrifugal supercharger to the 671 root supercharger on our 383 stroker motor? Well, the first thing on the roots blower, two things we know. They look awesome. Sticking out of the hood, they definitely provide lots of presence, and also they provide immediate boost response because, let's face it, it's a roots blower. What about the centrifugal blower? Well, we know they're very efficient. We know that they have a rising boost curve and they make lots of peak power. But the question is, how can these two superchargers produce the same power curve? That's why I love testing, because we find stuff that we don't think should happen. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.